When we think about vertebrates moving onto land, one of the things that we most need to consider is one of the most common lifestyles there is, and that's eating plants. Plants are much harder to process than other foods, and that's because they have all of these really tough, thick cell walls that aren't as easy to actually get through. Meanwhile, if you're eating something like another animal, all of the proteins that you need are already inherently there because that animal also needed those proteins. So it's a much more streamlined way to get energy and sustenance. But there's a lot of plants around, so some animals do eventually start eating plants. And that's what makes it really interesting to find this new animal coming from the Carboniferous. Melanoadaphodon hovecae is this new Carboniferous edaphrosaurid. And it's kind of interesting to find it here because it really helps to fill in a major time gap in our understanding of when vertebrates on land first started to really start trying to eat plants. Vertebrates first moved to land a few tens of millions of years earlier with animals like Tiktaalik which is a really interesting one, but also was still mostly eating other animals. It wasn't really built for kind of herbivory in any meaningful way. But after the Devonian, the diversification of land-based vertebrates or tetrapods really started in earnest. However, a lot of what we found still suggested they were mostly eating one another or eating insects and other arthropods that would have been around on land at the same time. Also interesting because it really fills in this kind of gap that we have in our understanding of how herbivory evolved. Because when we start getting into like really genuine, very heavily herbivorous animals, we're looking at things like Edaphrosaurus, which is well known for being one of the larger early Permian synapsids. It would have been about 10 feet long, or a little over 3 meters. And for land-based animals during that time, that is absolutely massive compared to most of the other life that we had found before we started finding things like Edaphrosaurus. Now, while we don't have full fossils of Melanoadaphodon, it's still really useful because we have the fossils that are laid out there, and you can see the scale bar in the image is two centimeters, so a little bit less than an inch. So the whole skull of this thing wasn't very large, and by extension, it also probably wasn't very large. This is actually kind of close to the size of another animal, Eanthosaurus, that was found to be Melanodaphodon's closest relative. And this is actually kind of interesting because based on the teeth of Eanthosaurus, it wasn't eating plants at all. It was very much a carnivore and eating other animals. So it's really interesting that there's just this one kind of adjacent part of this lineage that did eventually lead into some of the first very large bodied herbivores on the planet. And the teeth are a little bit of a clue of how Melanodaphodon was actually able to start moving into plants. Because some of the teeth are still a little bit more blunt and probably would have been really good for crushing up hard carapist insects and other arthropods. Meaning it probably evolved this by grabbing certain arthropods that were around plants and then also just processing the plants. And eventually just got better and better at processing plants until eventually some of these animals became, like a Daphrosaurus, very large herbivores. But that also means it wasn't quite as good at processing plants as something like a Daphrosaurus would have been. Based on what we know of a Daphrosaurus, it would have been eating a very high fiber diet. Meaning essentially the plants that were there were large, dense plants with a lot of fiber to try and prevent things from eating them. Think about the difference that you have between eating a potato and a celery stick. One of those has a lot more fiber. So it's entirely different kinds of mechanisms that these plants are trying to do in order to prevent themselves from being eaten. And then certain animals like Adaphrosaurus just evolved to get past that fiber. Melanodaphodon though still wasn't that close to actually being able to process those kinds of really high density plants. Like I mentioned, it still had those dome teeth. It was probably still eating a lot of insects and other arthropods, but that doesn't mean that's all it was doing. And it helps to show that this kind of behavior for plant eating actually developed further back than we had previously thought. This is millions of years before the first mammals or the first dinosaurs even. So it's a very early start to actually starting these animals onto eating plants, rather than it happening more during the Permian like it had previously been thought, because more of our fossils of things that did eat plants start there. So it seems like it was pretty quick after Tiktaalik started to leave the water that some of these different forms of new tetrapods on land started eating plants.